So welcome everyone. This is the Aperio Teaching and Learning Call on Wednesday, November 4th, 2020, the day after election day in the US, um, but we still don't know who our new president is. Um, my name is Trisha Gordon. I'm from the University of Virginia and I'm facilitating the call today. And we're gonna get started with some announcements. And I, I know Wilma has one. Yep. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the virtual conference is next week. Um, came up fast. Yeah, it, is. <laughs> um, it is on Thursday of next week, and um, I put the link to the conference website in the Etherpad. Um, if you've not yet registered, there's still time, and you can go to the website to look at the program um, and uh, you know see who all is speaking and, and the topics that will be covered and um, find out more also about the Instagram contest. We're doing an Instagram contest this year. Um, we're encouraging people to post photos of themselves in their Sakai gear. Um, that could be a t-shirt or holding a mug or, you know, holding up a stuffed Sakai gear, what have you. Um, so there's more detail on the, the contest rules. On the website, um, but that we're going to select the winners at at the um, event. So if you want to be um, a part of that contest, please um, you know take those photos and post them on Instagram. And it should be okay. a fun time. So <laughs> With the particular hashtag, I take it. Yes, sorry, it's the uh, hashtag SakaiCon2020. I like SakaiCon. That was a yep. good. I like that a lot. Sweet. Thank you, Wilma. Anything else? Anybody else have an, an announcement before we move into JIRAs? Okay, well, that's a big one. I hope to see folks there next week. Um, all right, so we're going to wait for Jorge to join us. And when he does, we'll uh, wrap up whatever we're talking about with JIRAs and um, then let him take the, the floor. But we're going to start with, um, hold on a second, let me copy this link and paste it in the chat. It is Sakai 40428. I don't see Tiffany on the call. So, um, but let me actually go ahead and share my screen and get us. Here we go. This is the one I want. Okay. And then I'm going to open up. This is rename, start a new conversation to new post. Yeah, there's been quite a bit of conversation about this in the community. Um, at first, we were wanting to change it to new post. But then Tiffany did some research and found that conversation was used quite a bit in, in a lot of different places. So um, let's see if we can find her. Oh, yes. And then Alan posted this wonderful little matrix of um, various places in their, their um, naming conventions for discussions and so forth. Um, So any thoughts, any ag agreement that we should keep conversations, but just change it to new conversation or do we like post? Um, I think new conversation is friendlier. Um, it is longer than post, but as long as it's an accurate description of what people are expected to do there, I would say we go with that. New conversation. <clears throat> Any Anyone have strong feelings against that? How about mild feelings? <laughs> against it 
we still have students that have trouble figuring out what they're supposed to do and and sometimes i wonder if starting start a new conversation as an option um contributes to that confusion i don't know but i don't have any data that would say that that's the case so yeah, we probably should do some testing on it. Um, I personally don't like starting a new conversation because I think it's long and wordy and too much text. Um, and if you look at, at the matrix from Alan, it looks like all of the other systems use something that's shorter. Um, but Yeah, or just new conversation, not start yeah. a new conversation, but... You know, we could shorten that. Yeah, but we could, since there's some indecision um, about what would be best, maybe we should do a little bit of testing and see, you know, what users prefer. Maybe some sort of survey or, or something that could go out to folks. So we can certainly comment to that. If I can find the comment button. Apparently I cannot. So sorry. I have a little bit. Where's the comment button? Oh, I think you have to log in. Oh, right. I am not logged in. Thank you. So I need to, oh my God, get out of my way. Open up this window a little bit more so I can, oh, for crying out loud. All right, sorry, I have a bunch of windows here and so it's, I'm having a, a little bit of a struggle. Let me log in real quick. There's that comment button. We, and when I say we'll conduct a survey, I don't know who we is. <laughs> I can do that. I can put together a survey. Thank you, Wilma. I'm just saying, Wilma. Okay, great. That's helpful and a good idea. Because, you know, there's just so many different ways that this is handled in the, the uh, online. So great. Thank you. Then the next item is SAC 244525, Samago set point value at part level instead of at question level. I wonder. Um, all right, so let's see if Tiffany has joined. Nope, she has not. And Jorge also has not. Um, so Tiffany has discovered that some instructors want to set points at a part level, basically. Um, and she's listed a bunch of use cases here. Uh, caveats and concerns, special scoring. Well, concerns also for just all the coding and testing involved. Um, the de desired feature request in this JIRA may depend on the completion of another JIRA for editing special scoring. Oh my goodness, so many dependencies. Uh, anybody have given this JIRA any thought or even know about it or have questions or thoughts?
If not, we will table until if Tiffany wants to bring it up again, she'll have to be here. There, yeah, there's an awful lot in here. Yeah, there, there I, is. When I looked at it in uh, the triage the other week when it came in, and it just seemed like it is a ton of work and testing for what would be a rather Shall I say niche demand? Well, particularly with all of the kind of use cases that she's come up with here, it seems to me like this is actually asking for more than one thing. Because I can see a, um, a desire for just the ability when creating a test to um, assign the same point value to all the questions within a part. It seems to, and that's just one aspect of everything that's packed into this JIRA. Um, and I would think that, that that one little bit wouldn't be horribly complex to, and again, I'm speaking as a non-designer, so I'm probably speaking out my you-know-what, but um, I would think that that wouldn't be too hard to, to implement, just to be able to say, oh, wait, I didn't, I, I um, I copied a bunch of questions from a question pool that didn't have point values. I want them, or maybe they have different point values. I want them all to be the same, make them all three points. And and so that's what they all get set at regardless. I would think that wouldn't be too bad, but all these other things that she's asking about in here is just really multiple things. Yeah. As I, far I as think redistributing points and things. Or I was thinking there could also be a need for being able to create a part and say out of this part where I've got five questions, students will be scored for two. And then it uh, it yep. limits it, but only in, within that part. But that would be a mm -hmm. very. That, that's the other use case that, sorry, my audio yeah. wasn't working. I couldn't. But but that almost on, sounds like it, it that could, that could be, be a, a separate more limited, Jira. Yeah, a much more limited feature than a part with just five questions and that you could say they have to do, they can only do two of the five. Yeah, so th there are two use cases that have been raised that, um, that people really want, uh, th that I've heard. And the main one is I want all my questions in a test to have an equal point val value regardless of what the number of questions is. So I want all of my tests to be worth 10 points because I'm gonna drop the lowest one. Uh, and um, of these tests, you know, I have, sometimes I have some that have 10 questions, sometimes I have some that have 20 questions, you know, whatever it is, I don't want to think about the points, I just want to assign a point value to the entire test. But so then we have... But Tiffany, you can, you can accomplish that by just doing equal weighting in the gradebook. You don't need to do anything to tests and quizzes. Well, I mean... Some instructors don't want to do it in the grade book. So a lot of instructors don't want to think about their point value of their test. They don't want to have to man manually enter a point value for every single question. They just want to enter a point I, value and they're done. I, I get that. And I can see wanting to add a point. I, I, I agree that there's um, a value in being able to say, okay, I have a part with X number of questions in it. Make all these questions worth three points. Yeah. I get that. That's fine. But then worrying about, oh, well, every test has to be ma making all the questions equal no matter how many, and, it, and the whole thing is worth 10 points, that's a whole other ball game. That's an entirely different thing in my eyes, rather than just arbitrary, rather just assigning a point value to all the questions that would just basically fill in the point value. Well, so maybe you know, the, the thing is that they don't want to fill in the point value as the same point value for all questions. You can do that with a question pool already. You can put your questions in a pool and say, I want all questions to be worth one point each. Yeah, but you don't necessarily always want to be drawing from a question pool. If I've No, um, you don't. If if I've used markup text and I forgot to put the point values in, okay, I pull all these questions in. I I just created a hundred multiple choice question exam. But I didn't yeah. put any I forgot to put the point values in. Okay, yeah. I just want to assign point values to everything. 
that's a relatively simple thing to do to just f yeah. automatically fill in all those point value boxes with the same number. Okay, yeah, but that's I'm going to make them all the, three points. I know, but I think what you're asking for is something different and that's right, that's, far more complicated. That, that's, that's not why the, I think this is multiple. Case. Well, it's a use case that I've run into. Right, but I mean the use case that I've that I've been requested is that I've had requested is to have a point value assigned to a set of questions, a flat point fill. That's right. what these people have wanted to do. Uh, they don't want to think about their point value. They don't want to think about how many questions they have. They say, I want X point value for my test and I'm done. I don't want to think about it anymore. Okay, the, the biggest issue I would have with that is some things that we've seen in the past, and maybe this has been fixed, but if if you start saying, okay, I've got 17 things and it's going to be worth 23 points, you're going to get into decimal point problems and things not adding up right. Well, see, that's exactly why they want this feature and not have to worry about manually entering all of those decimal point problems. That's precisely the problem because Gradebook doesn't get it rounded the same way as tests and quizzes sometimes and then you end up with like a point value that's fractional and weird yep. and it won't count it won't drop the lowest grade that's exactly why this is needed okay well needed and wanted may be two different things here but um i i wonder if this is an issue for a lot of schools Do, are other schools seeing requests like this that tiffany is describing Not that part. No, we haven't seen that. I have seen, I think she had also put into this one um, example use case number four of, okay, I have five essay questions, but I only want students to do three of them. Um, we have seen that one multiple times. Yeah, and right. So I think uh, in order for this to to get and again, I think that's a separate thing. I, I I'm not sure, quite sure why all of these were crammed into one Jira. Right. So I think if my what I'm hearing is if we could simplify this Jira, focus on one thing, and then it might get traction. But as it stands, it's just too much being at there's too much going on in this one one request is that is that a good summary of of what folks are saying on the call okay no opinions? Great. <laughs> so uh, I have commented that, um, you know, this Jira as it stands is, is got too much in it. Tiffany, I think you're going to have to either uh, reduce this to the most essential thing or, um, or it probably won't get done. So. Well, I mean, the reason why multiple use cases were presented was for a single thing to provide, you know, I mean, the, the thing would, if it were done to allow all questions in the, in the part to have a set point value, then it would, it would work, <laughs> you know, it would just work, but, you know, whatever. Um, so I think, I don't know, I don't know whether to leave this open or close it as won't do, or I don't think it's going to happen as it stands right now. That's what I'm, I seem to be hearing from folks. Do we, do we want to give Tiffany some feedback that she can use to rework this JIRA or break it out or any thoughts? 
I think simplifying it would be a good strategy um, because Samago is so complex already yeah. that adding more complexity to an already yeah. somewhat overcomplicated tool might not be the best approach yeah. for the majority of institutions. Um, yeah. And, you know, we need to make sure that it's something that, that the majority of folks actually would want before we, you know, actually add it. start working on it. Yeah. So Tiffany, it's up to you. You can either withdraw it or simplify it. And well, I mean, the, the whole concept is actually quite simple. You assign a point value to the part. Whatever questions are in it, it doesn't matter. The points are assigned to the part only, and the, they're autom automatically divided among the questions evenly. You know, I mean, that <laughs> it's actually a really simple concept. I was just trying to explain why it's useful for a number of different reasons. Uh, so I guess explaining that it's useful is not helpful. So I don't know. <laughs> you know? Um. Sorry, I just kicked myself out of the session. Um, so I think I would simplify just what you've got in the JIRA, Tiffany, to um, just you know all the use cases and it, all of that. If if you if you want any traction on this, I think you're going to have to do that. So that's I think that's where we are with that one. Do we have Jorge yet? Tiffany, I think the thing that really made it look more complicated is actually your use case number four. Because for all the others, it's great at the way we're logically seeing it, which is if the student doesn't do the question, they would get zero out of whatever fraction of your total points. But for four, you're having the possibility of the answer two out of five correctly, they get the full points regardless of not answering the remaining three. Okay. So even just maybe cutting that part out of it might s simplify the use case, the functionality, rather than having it get lost in the weeds there. Okay. Yeah, the number of four sounds like a different feature request. I've lost my... Thank you, Wilma. Sorry, I kicked myself out and lost my status. Okay. All right, so we still don't have Jorge, and that's fine. Um, we'll move on to deck 43334. Tiffany, I think you also added this one. Yeah. This was one we started talking about a long time ago and just never finished talking about because it's actually quite a complicated problem uh, due to some bad designs of uh, how content is stored. All right, let's see. Is there any comment down here? This mostly duplicates a 10 year old issue. Okay. So where did, does anybody know where we left off on this? I don't think I was in the session. The, the notes are in the agenda. I mean. Oh, so they are, yeah. All right. Well, there's greater control over attachments that they've uploaded attachments and various tools are saved in a magical, hidden, mysterious, totally obfuscated, unaccessible location and content. <laughs> well put. <laughs> <clears throat> Cannot delete file that was added as an attachment. Desire for user to be able to see that content. This is complicated, carried over from last time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so, um... This initially came out of years ago, uh, some problems that our instructors had where they sent an email to their site and they accidentally attached the wrong file or something. 
and they went and deleted the email from the email archive tool. But the attachment still existed in the site, even though the email was gone, the attachment was still accessible to students because the link was still live. And our developers had to go in and manually nuke that attachment. Uh, and the same thing happened to someone in, I think, announcements where deleting the announcement did not clean out the associated attachment and then people could still access it. Hmm. And um, we've also seen uh, an issue with that in tests and quizzes where if you import the zip file uh, with the quiz from content packaging, um, the embedded attachments are, are hanging around when the uh, quiz is deleted and you can't get rid, we don't know that they're there to get rid of them sometimes. Although that may have changed recently. I, I think there was more cleanup done uh, on quizzes. So maybe that's that's changed since I created this years ago. Oh, huh, it's, it was created this year. Maybe I just copied it from years ago, I don't know. <laughs> from the 10 year old. <laughs> yeah, the 10 year old one. No, I, I know I, I had, looked at this before, but maybe I copied it from a local JIRA I had created. Yeah, exactly. I don't know. Um. <clears throat> it, uh, I don't, yeah, so it sounds, it sounds like a lot of parts, possibly. Yeah. I don't, you know, I just don't, because different tools may or may not, I don't know, handle how attachments get saved and then like in assignments, it's is does assignments have a similar issue or does I yes. every school have assignment? A so assignments, you can only delete an attachment that a student uploaded by allowing resubmission and having either the student go in there, you know, changing the dates to let the student go in there to edit the submission, or going in as instructor submit as student and editing the submission. So it has to have a lot of open pieces to be able to remove a student submission. Um, in, in one, you know, first of all, the instructor can't delete it themselves uh, unless they enable the student to delete it, and the dates have to be open to do it as a resubmission to delete it. So I guess I have to ask, <clears throat> you know, how often does this come up? Is it, is it, are there workarounds? It sounds like a developer can go in and and help out if you happen to have a handy developer. Um, yeah, if. <laughs> uh, what, uh, you know, just what is the urgency or, or priority for, for work like this? Um, well, I, I think that it's gonna be hard to do because it's just bad design, uh, long standing, years and yeah. years old bad design. Right. Um, but I think it's something that you know, as tools are being fixed on the back end to be better, content is one that really should be getting some attention because it's nasty for users to not be able to get their stuff out or, you know, remove stuff when they inadvertently upload something that they didn't want to. Um, you know, in, in one case we had a, uh, an inadvertent FERPA violation or something where an instructor put some some uh, wrong file in an attachment and then had to get it deleted. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. So, um, are others on the call? Anybody else running into this or feel have any um, thoughts on on? Uh, I have not run into it myself. I haven't checked with any of my um, coworkers on it. I can see where it could be an issue though. Mm -hmm. well, yeah. I haven't run into that particular issue either, but I have had some inquiries just about kind of the general transparency and location of, of it. I actually just had one yesterday about, it's like, hey, where do these files that I attach go anyway? Where are they? <laughs> yeah. Um, so I I think 
what I'm hearing is it would be nice to do. It's going to take a lot of work and um, I agree. I, I linked to an old ticket on there, um, mm -hmm. uh, you know, from uh, it's, uh, the, the 21309 from, you know, from the old days of Sakai where, you know, the original developer of content had commented on this and said it was, a. I think he said it was, Jim said it was a good idea, but, um, you know, it's, uh, and it was, it was getting easier to do. And he actually at one time, almost rewrote content in Michigan, but it never it was like half finished. Yeah. Um, so, and it was, this, it was, well, this was actually a feature that was supposed to be in the rewritten content. And, you know, exposing it in the existing content is something I've always wanted to do too, because I thought getting this uh, transparency to users would be really nice. And I just don't, I don't know how much work it would take in the existing, um, in the existing content tool. Right. And the, the other thing is that, if content were done in a way that made it made the uploaded things better able to be worked with, I wonder if we couldn't do something like what people have been wanting for years, which is to have CK editor embeds be a you know copy paste functionality, um, you know for images like a drag drop copy paste kind of thing into CK editor. Um, so that's been a big uh, demand for, for a long time, but we've never been able to do it because the stuff has to be uploaded somewhere and it doesn't have a, w a place to go automatically to uh, embed it in the editor in that fashion. Yeah. Well, that sounds like a huge um, project uh, to rewrite content. <laughs> Unquestionably. I mean, yeah. content's a mess. Yeah. So yes, I think I'm hearing that we all agree it would be nice and helpful and would solve some problems that come up from time to time. Uh, yeah. And there was a pull request, like there, there's been a plugin where you could paste images in the seek editor and it would like base 64 encode them into the content, but that also has its own problems. Mm -hmm. Because like certain content area are different, there's different sizes all around Sakai. So you might have a content area that could hold a couple of megabyte image, that's right, or a couple of gigabyte image, but some that you, that you can't, and it it would that's be truncated. Right. So um, it would either have to like be embedded as a base sixty four image in the text, or it would have to be uploaded somewhere, and that where it's going to be uploaded is is question is a question like it could be uploaded anywhere but we could do this now i think it's there's support for it in c canada but where is it going to go and what form is it going to be yeah that that's precisely the problem well so if we um approach this issue with with the ck editor you know just working from ck editor and and creating a way for that to happen instead of trying to retrofit it into how things work already is that is that something that would be more doable i have no idea well one thing we should probably do is split out i should probably split out the site email one into a separate um ticket where site email allows you to delete the attachments you know that are associated with emails when you delete the email or just have it clean out the attachments something like that all right i'll make a note of that yeah i think you know as as much as we can keep our JIRA specific, the more likelihood that they might actually get addressed. Okay, do we need to continue to talk about this? Because Jorge has joined us 
And I think we will take this time to go ahead and give him presenter privileges. Let me do that. Welcome, Jorge. And your mic is muted, just so you know. Um, yeah, he's he's preparing his microphone. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. He's still working on it. Okay. No worries. Um, yeah, a couple, couple minutes. A couple more minutes. All right. Thanks. <clears throat> well, then we have another Jira. So it looks like Sean brought this one forward, SAC 44551. And this was um, Samago set grading to last score if only one submission allowed. So I think this is just simplifying, you know, what Samago does in terms Oh, I, I disagree with this because if the instructor allows a re, uh, retake for a student, um, then it should not be changing the, the score from high to last, definitely not. I strongly right. disagree. I'd also like to disagree with this one. Um, we had a bug. I don't know if it's still happening in 20, but I know it happened a couple times in 19 and long before that, where under circumstances we haven't figured out, uh, when a student submits a test, it will launch a second attempt, even if the test is set to one attempt. The student never sees that second attempt, and it's submitted when the time expires, and it's a zero. And if that was set, then the student would get a zero in their grade book and they'd have some serious panic moments. Yeah, for sure. You know, I, I, I think that uh, the instructor who doesn't see all the submissions, that's a much, much less common problem. And they can select that view all submissions drop down and then they can grade the right one. Um, I, I, yeah, I definitely do not want grading to automatically change uh, its setting on anyone. That's not appropriate. Okay. So, yeah, I wonder why this was suggested. It, it may have just come up in testing and somebody just wasn't thinking through all the different use cases. So. Any dissenters from Tiffany and Christina's? I think so, Dave. I think it is meant the, the impetus behind this year was to make it a time saving step for the instructor or, yeah, or for testers. I don't know. But. Now, I, I would support making the drop down in tests and quizzes in the score screen display all submissions by default if uh, there's only one submission allowed. That wouldn't bother me. Why don't you comment to that effect in the JIRA, if you don't mind, Tiffany? Yeah, because as long as it's not affecting the student's score, I, you know, it's fine to just show the instructor all the submissions, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, as long as there's not multiple submissions where you'd have, like, potentially you know, 10 yeah, submissions right. per student, like massive right. numbers of them. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, why don't you comment to that effect? And that'd be helpful. All right. I think we may have time. Oh, great. Jorge is ready to go. Okay, just a minute. No problem. A lot of network problems, sorry. Oh, no, that's no. <laughs> Bad day here in Murcia. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. We, I think we've all been there. Yes, Murphy's Law. <laughs> we have heard of Murphy's Law. And he is alive and well. Yep. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Tiffany, you had one more JIRA uh, while we're waiting. We may have time to look at it. It's SAC 40680. 
and I don't know. Yeah, so this was about um, assignments. Uh, when you assign, make a group assignment from joinable groups, the students can then not join the groups because of assignments locking the, um, the groups. And um, so the discussion in this JIRA was suggesting to um, prevent assignments from being linked to joinable groups at all. But I think it's a very valid use case. And um, in fact, assignments needs to be made to handle groups better so that group cha membership changes can be acceptable uh, without losing submission data. Uh, I think this is a, a poor design to lock the groups for membership changes. Uh, and, and that's what needs to be addressed, not preventing the instructor from assigning these groups to an assignment in the first place. Sounds like others are in complete agreement a thousand times. Uh, yeah, so, um, we talk about it in the core team and we agree on that, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Cool. It's, all this locking was supposed to be just kind of a temporary fix to keep users from from screwing up and making it, you know, making the the problem worse. But it's kind of been building on it on a top of each other and and making making worse problems, I think, than what it yeah. originally solved. So now we need to revisit this, and it's going to take some time to get the best solution. But there is a path. I think people want to get a better solution than all of these locking problems. Great. And so I see comments uh, from Earl from yesterday's core team meeting, and it sounds like that. So it, it's already uh, on the list. So great. It's not going to be like 21 in a couple weeks or months, but it's going to be sometime and it'll be for it's on the roadmap. I think we're 22 now. People Great. are interested in it. Good. Good. Wonderful. And or maybe a, a minor release of 21. Okay. Wonderful. All right. It looks like Jorge is ready to go. Jorge, I've given you presenter privileges. So if you have um, anything, a screen. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, I am connecting. Okay. Everything so, yeah, I guess you can see my screen now. Uh, just about uh, it's, a it's, fancy it's, group of repeating screens. Yeah, uh, here we it, are. Yeah, you're going to be talking to us about a work log tab in assignments. Yes, excellent. Our, our teachers uh, from the school uh, from informatic uh, computers uh, in, in Murcia asked for uh, some sort of, of uh, development in, in order to for them to be able to to keep track of the amount of time that the students require to develop the the assignments that uh, that they find in the in Sakai. So uh, we made a, a development uh, in the in the oof, Sorry, I, I'm messing with my Spanish <laughs> in the assignment uh, tool. Okay. Mm, this development is uh, completely. Mm, mm, I would say that mm, doesn't touch anything that uh, doesn't involve itself. Uh, I mean, it can be toggled uh, uh, in any signature or any installation, I mean, institution, OK? Mm -hmm. Once uh, you find a, a signature like this one, uh, where, the, where that uh, ability, I would say, is enabled, uh, you can find here, sorry, here, you can find here a column which records uh, the amount of time that uh, any any assignment is for in, in one hand estimated and on the other hand 
the average time that the students have spent on this task. Once you add a new assignment, let's say, text, you can here in the middle uh, set that this assignment requires uh, an estimate time. And you can set that estimate uh, to be mandatory for the students to fulfill. Uh, you have to set here the time. For instance, it, it recognizes uh, upper and lower case. If you say here, hours and minutes. And if you put here 93 minutes, it will be transferred to one hour, one hour and 30 minutes, okay? And once you save the assignment like this, you can see it here, teaching and learning one hour and a half. And for students, that my student is here. Once you go to the assignments to you can see as a student, sorry. You can see as a student that this assignment has an estimated time. And the most of most of the part of the development in the in the in the user side is here. Mm, you have the usual uh, description of the assignment uh, with a, a fresh entry uh, showing the, the amount of time that is supposed to take that assignment. And here in the top is the a new tab that we created in order to, to keep track of the of your timesheet or your work, workload. You can add a new record for the lab, two hours. You can hear you can see here a log of your timings. Once you've worked in an assignment <clears throat> and you have the assignment ready to send, here in that section, you can choose to specify a global amount of time that this assignment has taken to you. So, has, sorry, has taken you to 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 complete five hours, five hours, for instance, or you can select the amount of time that you stored in your timesheet section. So as you click here, that time transfers to that field. You send the assignment. You go back to the list, and that is here. The amount of sorry, that is here. When you go and log as a teacher, again, you can see here as we've only sent an assignment, we don't have here the the average, okay? Because we have just one submission, uh, but. You can see in the submissions, sorry, here in the in the student uh, view, you can see the estimate and how the student is going to see it. And we've also created references to to that functionality in every screen. On, on every screen. 
when you see his submission, you see here, it's here, you can see here the amount of time that has taken for that student. And when you mm, score, when you score, uh, when you grade, I know, sorry, I have to, I have to, to specify that that assignment requires the grading. Uh, once you grade that assignment, you can also see in the description of the assignment uh, the the amount of time that you've set as an estimate for the assignment. I don't know if that's clear. I can create a different one. For that to be clear. Also, uh, I want to mention that uh, this functionality is enabled uh, for assignments that are individual or group uh, or, or individual but assigned to a group. Uh, as this functionality would bring some um, not not error but but uh, misconception for those assignments that are group assignments for, for those ones uh, because many students would make a single submission uh, we thought that this functionality um, wouldn't apply very well to that kind of, of, of submission kind of. okay going back i would cancel here going back here again Was we specify here? See, submit, and going back again as a teacher. View submissions. We have that submission. We grade it. Oh, sorry. I, I need to specify a grade for the assignment. You know what they say, in the third one is a good one. So. Proceed, submit, and then again, as a teacher, the third one. We can see his I'm spent and oh, sorry. Okay, and we can see the great student view again. His total time is great. And it will be here, yes. But the detail, the details of the 
Yes, I need that. I need to remember where that's what what that was located. That one back. Okay, that, that's here. The third one, it can spend three hours. And that's it. Jorge, thank you. There's been some conversation going on in the chat that I just want to capture for our recording. And uh, Eduardo has been very helpful in responding to the questions. Um, mostly around uh, whether the um, this it, so all the time is self-reported by the student and it's only available to do so if the instructor enables that and so Edward yes. confirmed all of that um, this looks like a really good feature and we are at the top of our hour I'm so sorry um, this is this is very in very cool um, and so there are some suggestions. Uh, I'm sure Eduardo, you're capturing uh, some of this. Tiffany is suggesting it might be valuable to give instructors the option to enable time tracking without specifying an estimated time. Um, because yeah, sometimes they may not know. Um, so thank you so much for sharing this. And it, it looks like it could be a real um, benefit and for a lot of instructors so thank you so much and i'm sorry we're out of time and, and sorry for the delay oh that's okay we really totally get it we've all been there um and really appreciate you um doing <laughs> going to the you know to the trouble to to get where you needed to be to to give us a presentation this is really great You're thank welcome. you so much welcome. And so, yeah Folks, we're going to go ahead and uh, stop the recording and adjourn the meeting. Um, our next meeting is in a couple of weeks, so look for information about that, uh, and we'll see you then.